All right, in the last video we looked at the different parts of the sine and cosine uh, function, um, looking at the how we come up with the key points that we're going to plot. I mean, we're going to take the period, divide it up by 4, and then just make our way left to right from some starting point. All right, and the sine and the cosine, we can graph that way, um, starting with our initial point, figuring out what the period is, all right, uh, dividing that up by four to get those um, other four key points, the, the high points, the low points, and the other intercepts. All right, so what we're going to start off with um, are, these are called sinusoids, so these are just sine or cosine, all right, and in the parentheses, we've got something being added or subtracted, possibly from the x, something being multiplied by the x, and then a possibly a number out front. So, what all these things, each one of these things has its own role in the graph of the sine and cosine function. All right, so this is uh, Desmos, and we're going to look at what happens if we have a sine bx minus c. Now, notice I'm going to make c right now. I'm going to make it zero to start off. All right, and if you look, what we're looking at right now is just the sine function. So it's one sine times one times x minus zero. So this is just the sine function. And I want you to see first what a does. a is the amplitude. Amplitude is the height from the midline to the high point or the low point. This is the distance from the high point to the low point. I'm going to shrink this down a little bit and make this go up higher and higher and higher. You can see that's what A is controlling. It's just the highest point on this graph. All right. Now, let me go back down to 1, sign that we're used to. All right now, what is B going to control? Well, notice when I make B bigger, B is the coefficient of X inside the sine function. I want to make B larger, notice that the period shrinks. How long it takes to go from um, back, back to where we started. All right. Notice that's from 0 to 2 pi. That's shrinking when I make B bigger and bigger and bigger. All right. To get back to where we were initially. It's two if I can. Alright, instead of having to go from zero all the way to two pi, notice now I'm going from zero to pi and I'm back to where I started. Because I doubled the input. Alright, and again I can make this really, really, really shrink down and be narrow if I make the number in front of it really, really big. Alright, it really compresses and squeezes everything in. And then likewise if I go down below one, it starts to widen until eventually it goes to a straight line when we are at zero, a horizontal line, and then when we dip into the negatives it just flips over the y-axis and starts doing its thing again. Okay, so there is what B does. B is um, changing the period, altering the period of this thing. It's basically dividing the original period by whatever B is. Okay? And finally, C in conjunction with B, they do something called a phase shift. And we are moving the function to the left and right based on what C is. Notice if C gets bigger, as I make C larger, alright, it's moving to the right, but it's a negative C. Alright, so it's, uh, because C is negative, it looks like we're moving in the direction as C changes, and that's true, but only because C is negative in the formula. Okay, so C is called the phase shift, C and B, when they work together, we get a, um, a combination. If B is different than 1, then C and B together are what we, call, what we refer to as the phase shift. And that's just moving the uh, starting point off the midline. So instead of it being at the origin like we're used to when C is 0, so our, 
our uh, starting value gets moved a little bit to the left or to the right. All right, and then there's all the parts of the same thing for the cosine. So all I do is change this from sine uh, to cosine, and everything uh, is still true. Everything back to 1, and we just look just like the old cosine function initially that we're used to. So there's the cosine function starting at the peak. If B, or sorry, if A changes, that just changes the amplitude just like before. And right, we go in the negatives, it flips over. We start at our low point rather than our high point. B compresses everything in or stretches everything out. And C is that shift, that phase shift left to right. 